All right. Um, so speaking of conservatives, I was reading an article in the New York Times this morning by David Brooks, conservative David Brooks. And the title of it was Ted Cruz's Brutalism or the Brutalism of Ted Cruz. It's an interesting read, especially from the perspective of conservatives. It's a conservative writing it. And it, it starts off with the story of in 1997, Michael Wayne Haley uh, was arrested for stealing a calculator from Walmart. Um, now, the crime itself merited a maximum of two years in prison. But this starry eyed conservative by the name Ted Cruz um, felt as though the what was the exact law? The sentence, um, the habitual offender law should be applied to this young man who stole a calculator. So a sentence, a crime that would have warranted two years maximum, eventually got Haley sentenced to 16 years. And instead of doing what was morally correct in the situation, instead of doing what was really legally correct based on precedent, right? Based on defense attorneys, based on um, uh, previous cases, similar cases, instead of what was doing what was morally and legally correct, Ted Cruz decided to prosecute this kid to the fullest extent of the law. Or the article actually says it was a mistake. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't really. Well, let's take the article for its word. The article says it was a mistake. When that mistake got taken to the Supreme Court, um, instead of conceding that it was a mistake, instead of backing down from this ridiculously long sentence over petty theft, 16 years instead of two years, Ted Cruz pushed forward to maintain the charge and the sentence rather that he had been given such that justice anthony kennedy asked ted cruz is there some rule that you can't confess error in your state in other words they took this issue of a young man stealing a calculator worth two years in prison they accidentally give him 16 years in prison but instead of admitting that they made a mistake, they took it all the way to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court had to ask, are you kidding us? David Brooks uses this story to cast light on the brutish and brutal rather, um, I intentionally said brutish, but brutal character of Ted Cruz. Such that we see it in his language we see it in his apocalyptic doom and gloom. Everything is wrong. Everything, everything except the environment is wrong. There's, you know, the world is coming to an end except by virtue of global warming or climate change, right? Because he doesn't see anything there. His mom was a scientist, so he's qualified to trump anything NASA scientist says. But besides that, set that aside, the world is coming to an end. Obama, uh, the Obama Clinton machine, you know, they've been uh, a tragedy for America. They cast everything as if um, this has been the worst eight years in American history. And this is something that has to end because the tyrannical reign of this oppressive dictator must come to an end. And Ted Cruz is the only way to bring it to an end. And so ultimately, with Michael Wayne Haley, uh, instead of two years, he was eventually released after serving six years in prison over a two year maximum penalty for petty theft for stealing a calculator out of Walmart. David Brooke is a conservative. Brooks is a conservative. And I think it's important to point out that it's revealing that Ted Cruz is now not even palatable for conservatives. I think some people consider him the lesser of two evils between Trump and Ted Cruz, but many in the Republican establishment, along with David Brooks, really consider Ted Cruz to not only be brutish and brutal, but really uncouth and um, not quality. 
he's definitely like he, he he's he would be considered um in in he would be considered new money right he's he's like the he's like the class the the local idiot who has meandered his way into the senate because of the opportunity the opportunistic period of the tea party onslaught a person like ted cruz would never have made it this far in the republican establishment and so the establishment is making it known that ted cruz is not their man besides marco rubio is their man if they're going to pick a hispanic they're going to pick the the prettier hispanic right marco rubio looks far better you know you know ted cruz looks like eddie monster right so the conservatives you know conservatives are all about vanity of vanities they want they want the good looking marco rubio that's their man and so David Brooks has turned coat on conservatives and, and broken uh, Ronald Reagan's preeminent law. Conservatives will not attack a conservative. Um, but I think in his whatever his justification for turning on Ted, Ted Cruz, I think his analysis is apt. Right. I think I think he's hit it on the head. He absolutely has hit it on the head. I like this. This uh, I'll, I'll just read this particular paragraph. The fact is this apocalyptic diagnosis is ridiculous. The Obama administration has done things people like me strongly disagree with. But America is in better economic shape than any other major nation on the earth. Crime is down. Abortion rates are down. 14 million new jobs have been created in five years. You know that it is bad when a conservative starts talking positively about President Obama against one of their own candidates. But. Uh, whatever the reason, I think this article really kind of puts a backdrop into the character of Ted Cruz um, such that we can see that he really is, um, scarily enough, I think he's a true believer. I think he really believes what he says. I think he really means what he says. He's just terribly, horrifically misinformed and um, not only an ideological zealot but a religious zealot which means he's that much more dangerous because he actually believes it at least donald trump doesn't believe half of what he says caller you're live on the air what's your name comment and or question